Hello, so welcome to this month's bag making subscription project. This month you're making this really handy crafting bag that you can carry all your sewing bits and bobs around with you. So it's got a really nice big space in the middle. So you can put your fabrics in there. If you're working on a project, you can pop everything you need for your project in there. You've got some side pockets just here. These would be great for popping maybe a pattern in. I think I've got one. So yeah, just the right size for maybe popping a few patterns in. You could pop um, rulers in there if you've got some quilting rulers. And we've got some nice big pockets. We've got two big pockets at the front. So really good for your scissors, um, rotary cutter. Um, and then on the other side, you've got some smaller pockets. So I love having so many different pens and marking pencils. I've got all the different colours, so I pop those in there. I've also got my um, chalk pencil and refills, so I'm going to pop those in there. You can put your clips around the edge if you like. So, yeah, lots of space to hold all of your bits and bobs. Um, I've quilted the, this bag, so you don't, you'll notice in the instructions I talk about quilting the grey fabric. Um, after making it, you don't actually need to quilt it. So if you want to leave that step, you can do, but do quilt the pockets because it gives a really nice finish, gives them a bit more sort of um, rigidity, I think. But there you go, that's your big sewing tote bag that you can take out and about with you so i hope you enjoy the project please do share your makes with me i have popped a pattern into the boxes this month for let me just grab it one of these little um projects there's two different sizes this is the smaller size um and there should be enough fabric left over to make one of these so these are really nice for popping on your workspace um there's little um spaces in the middle for your scissors i've got another shape bear with me <laughs> this is the bigger one and it's got space for your scissors and whatnot on the outside as well so these are really good sort of like little craft holders so I'm not doing a tutorial for that. Um, I, you've got the pattern and um, probably enough fabric in your kits to make one of those. So there you go, all ready for your crafting. Have a good week or have a good month. See you soon, bye. Okay, so there's quite a lot of square pieces for this pattern. So you might find it useful to label them first of all. We've got, let's start with the base. So you've just got the outer fabric, your lining fabric and your fusible fleece. So I've just labeled that base. Then you've got your front and your back. So I'm going to make mine with the outer fabric being the, um, the gray canvas. Um, my lining fabric is gonna be the sewing themed fabric and then I've got my fusible fleece. So there's two pieces of those. We've got the sides, so again, I've got my outer fabric here, which is the gray um, canvas, my lining fabric and fusible fleece, two pieces of each there. But then we've got the side pockets. So these are very similar, just a little bit shorter than the sides. And we've got, I'm gonna have, this as my outer fabric, the sewing themed fabric. Um, I'm gonna use the gray canvas as my lining, and then obviously we've got the fusible fleece. And we've got the front pockets, which are the last ones just here. So they're a lot wider because we're going to have some, um, we, well, we're going to sew them so they've got a bit of depth to them. And again, I'm going to have the sewing themed fabric on the outside, the grey canvas and the fusible fleece. And there's two of each of those as well. And then, of course, we've got the strips of the floral fabric, which we're going to use as the binding. And so there's three of those cut across the width of the fabric. And we've got one lot cut across the width of the fabric, which we're going to use for the handles. So we're going to come to those a little bit later. So once you've cut out all your fabrics, if you go and um, fuse your fusible fleece to the outer fabrics, so decide um, which you're having where. So I'm going to have the base, the front and back 
and the sides, my outer fabric is going to be the grey. So I'm going to fuse my fusible fleece to the back of the grey. And then for the side pockets and front pockets, the outer fabric is the patterned fabric. Okay, so once you've put the fusible fleece on all your pieces and you've got everything labelled into bundles, we're going to start with the outer shell of the bag. So we're going to need the front and back bundle. Put your pockets and your base aside. So we're going to put those away for later and we're going to get the sides. Now, we only need the outer fabric. So for the main outer shell we're going to be making it out of the grey canvas so just pop your lining fabrics aside as well um, I'm going to keep my label with them because I get confused easily especially when there's so many bits of fabric that all look the same okay so because this is a um, quilted bag we're going to quilt together the two layers that we currently have now normally with quilting the there's usually three layers and the quilting part is basically just sewing the layers together. Um, because we're adding the lining separately to the bag, we're going to be quilting the outer to the fusible fleece. Now you're going to need a ruler. Let me just grab mine. And if you have a friction pen, use one of those, but if not any, um, removable pen would work. Now you can choose, if you've got a board and you want to do diagonal lines, you can look, use your cutting board, find the 45 degree angle and mark your diagonal lines. Sorry about the ring light shining off the ruler here. Um, what we're going to, what I'm going to do today, if you're brand new to quilting, it might be best just to do some straight lines. So we're going to start from the middle of the fabric and we're going to, well, we'll start from the edge and we'll draw one inch lines across. So once you've got your straight edge, just line up your edge with one of the straight edges going horizontally across the ruler. And you're going to draw one inch lines. And this is more annoying for me because I'm left handed. I'm going to turn it upside down. Don't know if that's going to help. There we go. Then I can use the line mark on the Perspex ruler just to then um, use it to draw one inch lines all the way across one of the outer pieces. I'm only going to do horizontal, um, sorry, vertical lines for the quilting. I'm not going to go across as well. If you want to, you can. It's entirely up to you how much you would like to quilt your layers together. Now, once you've drawn your lines in, we're going to sew the layers together using a straight stitch. And when quilting, you're going to increase your stitch length to about three, three and a half. So you have a slightly longer stitch length for quilting. You're going to start from your middle line. So always start in the middle. And this is to avoid bunching up the fabric. So if it moves at all, um, I mean, this should be okay because we've used fusible fleece. But if it does move or wriggle about, then it's best to start in the middle because then that way the fabric will evenly distribute over the lining um, or your wadding. So we're going to do that first. So increase your stitch length to about three and a half, starting from the middle, work your way out and just stitch along those lines. When you've done that, repeat with the other outer side and then your two side pieces, making sure they're, I think they're equal squares actually. So you don't need to worry too much about whether they are the right way round or not. But yes, yeah, so quilt all of those and we'll meet back here. Once you finish quilting those pieces, pop them back together in their bundles. So we've got the lining fabric there for the sides and you've got the lining for the front and back. Now we're just going to grab the two bundles of the pockets. So we've got the side, oh, 
pulled mine apart. You've got your side pockets and your front and back pockets. Now we're going to quilt these layers up together um, as we did before. However, this time we're going to be using the lining fabrics. So just take one of those away. So you're going to layer up your fabrics with now, if you had a lot, if you had a patterned lining fabric, you would have the right side facing out because you're going to see the pockets. But as our lining fabric is plain, it makes it quite easy. So we're going to quilt together the outer fabric, the fusible fleece and the lining fabric. So that needs to be facing out. That needs to be facing out. And we're going to do exactly the same, except just making sure that you keep your lining fabric in place. So you might want to pop a couple of pins. So obviously you're going to draw your lines first. And then once you've done that, just pop a couple of pins in the corners. And that will stop your fabric from moving about. And Obviously, once you get towards your pins, remember to take them out. So we're going to start sewing in the middle, work your way out, work your way out and just remove the pins. But they're just there to keep the layers together. So do that with all four pockets and we'll come back here. OK, so once you've quilted all of your outer pocket pieces, we're going to bind the tops. So I'll put those aside and we'll just work on one of the side and um, one of the side pockets so you're going to get from one of your strips of binding just cut it down so it's the width of the top and we're going to fold um, the binding in half so it's wrong sides together press it at the iron and then fold into the middle so that you've created your binding do that for the two longer pocket pieces. So you've got a strip of binding there. You've got two strips and then the two shorter pocket pieces. So once you've done that, we're going to bind the pocket pieces and we're going to do that by lining up the raw edge like so. And we're going to sew along that first fold. So it might be worth just popping a couple of pins in place just to hold it in place while you start the sewing. So you're just going to sew along that line first of all. Once you've sewn along that line, we're going to fold the binding up and over and then fold under that creased edge so that you've got the binding in place and you're going to sew as close to that edge as possible if you can just stitch in the ditch there and that should then tack the back in place if your binding doesn't go all the way back like that you can just trim a little bit from the top just to make sure that your binding will fold up and over and you've got a little bit longer on one edge than you have the other and then that way when you sew as close to that edge as possible if not in the gap you're going to be catching the back of the binding and sewing it in place once you've done that do it for the other three pocket pieces okay one side of the um caddy we're going to be putting three pockets in place actually no four pockets in place so to do this we're going to measure in one centimetre, which is your seam allowance from each edge using an erasable, erasable pen, make a mark. So that's one centimetre either side. Then you're going to find the halfway point and you're going to make a line just down there. Then you're going to measure in seven and a half centimetres and make a mark and seven and a half centimetres. So each pocket marking is seven and a half centimetres apart from each other. So you can measure in from the edge, make a mark seven and a half centimetres, then again into the middle point, And then you've spaced out your pocket positioning. Once you've done that, grab the pocket 
and obviously as you can see it's a lot wider so do the same thing you're going to measure one centimeter in from each edge this is your seam allowance and then you're going to be measuring in 10 centimeters so measure from that one centimeter seam allowance make a mark again 10 centimeters make a mark another 10 centimeters make a mark and another 10 centimeters so we've now spaced out the pockets we're going to tack them in place so to do this you're going to need your pins and make sure your pocket is straight and you're going to line up that central mark with the central mark of the outer piece pop a pin in place then we're going to line up the edge with your one centimeter seam allowance making sure that is running in line with the marking that you made then do the same with the other side and then get your markings for the other two pockets and line up with the marking just above and that way I'm just going to zoom in so you can see you're spacing out the pockets evenly and once you've done this going to pop another pin down this side just to hold it in place and the same on the other side okay I've just got that last pin to pop in place so I'm just marking up my markings once you've marked once you've pinned them in place, you're going to draw so a straight line down from each marking to create the pockets. So you're going to top stitch those in place and then you will have your four pockets and we'll meet back here. Okay, for the other side of the bag, we're going to have only two pockets. So I've pinned either side. I'm going to sew down um, my one centimeter seam allowance just to hold that in place and then I found the middle of the pocket the middle of the outer and I'm going to sew all the way down there just to create my two larger pockets once you've sewn the pockets in place so this is the one with the four pockets you just need to pleat make little pleats in the bottom so that that it all lies flat so I have basically just the two right hand pockets halfway in the pocket. I've just made a little pleat and clipped it. The same with the next one, folding the pleat towards the center seam and then exactly the same with the other two. So you've got the bulk from the pocket. I've just made a little pleat, folded it and clipped it towards the center seam. And then you're just going to tack those in place within the seam allowance. So that's the one with the four pockets. And then the side with the two pockets. Um, I've made two pleats. Um, so you've got the two larger pockets there. So we've sewn down the middle and tacked the sides. So it's quite a large amount of bulk that needs to be um clipped in place so I've just made a couple of little folds towards the center of the pocket it doesn't have to be accurate on both sides it doesn't have to measure the same really it's just making sure that you've flattened the base of the pocket so that when we sew all of the side seams together it's flat and ready to be constructed. So once you've done that, just tack in place within the seam allowance. So once you've tacked in the bottom, you're now going to attach the sides. And we've done something very similar to this in previous bags. 
we're going to be sewing each side on first and then stopping a centimetre from the bottom of the seam that you're sewing. So just remember, you're going to start at the top, do a back stitch, sew down and stop at one centimetre before the bottom for your seam allowance and do that with both side seam and uh, with both side pieces um, before we attach the other edge. So there you go, go ahead and do that and we'll move on to the next. So once you've done one side, we're going to do the same with the other side. So you have sewn both the side panels to the front panels. Okay, so this is the base. We're now going to attach the base piece to the body of the bag. And we're going to do this one seam at a time. So just matching up the seam allowance. So we've left that one centimetre seam allowance just there. We're just going to wiggle the base right sides together into that space there. And so one seam at a time. It's just the easiest way to do it. So if you go ahead and do this, so across the seam there, so starting at the one centimetre seam allowance, so where you finished off sewing, you're going to sew straight across. And then when you've done that one, do the same for the other side. Right sides together. And then once you've sewn those two seams, so remember you're starting and finishing off where you finish sewing the side seams. And then you do the longer sides. And then we will have finished completing the main outer. Before you do that, you might wanna just trim the seam allowances on the sides just to get rid of a lot of the bulk that was there. So just trim them by half. Um, yeah, so go away and do that. And then we'll talk about the next step. So there you go. Once you've sewn all the four sides of the basin, you can turn your bag the right way out. Okay, your craft storage is starting to take place. It's starting to come together. Oh, you might want to trim some corners, cut some bulk out of the corners as well, which I didn't do, which is why it's not turning as easily. So let's just chop some of that off. Just being really careful not to go through the stitches. It is hard when you've got such a small seam allowance. So I'm probably going to just chop it Chop into it, get rid of some of that bulk. That just helps a little bit. So do that with each corner. And then you can turn it the right way out. Okay, so we're going to now construct the lining in exactly the same way as we've constructed the outer, obviously without the pocket. So it's just constructing the lining to make the sides and the base all attached. I'm going to go away and just press my seams so that this base lies a little bit flat. So do that as well. But then we will come back once you've sewn your lining together. So once you've constructed the lining, you're going to have your outer bag facing the right way out, your lining bag facing the the wrong way out so that when you pop your lining bag inside the outer you can see the print and then you're going to match up the seams pop a clip or a pin and do that all the way around just making sure it's all lined up nice and neatly push in the sides just make sure it's you know you're happy with the fit and how everything's sitting, push it all in. And once you're happy, top stitch this in place, less is basically just as close to the edge as you can, because you, you don't want it to be seen by the binding. So just 
do a tacking stitch all the way around just to hold that lining in place. Once you've tacked your um, lining in place, we're going to bind all the way around the top like we did for the top of the pockets. So take one binding piece and you're going to press it exactly the same as we did before in half and then with the edges into the crease so that we're creating a binding strip. Go ahead and do that and then we'll start clipping. Okay, so once you've made your binding, we're going to attach. So let's start at the side panel. So first of all, you're going to fold under a raw edge. And then as we did before, I'm just going to use a couple of clips to start me off. But to be honest, actually, I want to go this way because we're going to be sewing. I'm just thinking the sewing machine travels in that direction. So there we go. Fold it under. Use a clip to secure the end. And then I find it easier not to clip in place first. I'm just going to go take the drawer out of your sewing machine and just sew all the way around that first crease. And then once you've done that, you're going to fold up and over, but we'll come back that to go, th I'll start again, come back to this, this space to go through that stage. Once you've sewn all the way around, just um, finish off by folding under the end of the binding. And then as before, we're going to fold up the binding and over. So if you feel like maybe you want to trim this seam allowance just a little bit, just to make sure that when you fold up and over, you're going to be sewing as close into the ditch as you can, and it should be catching the back of the binding. If it's not, and I'm just not sure mine's going to, so I'm going to trim just a little bit, literally just a few millimetres off my seam, off um, this seam allowance here, just to make sure that when I push, when I press my binding up and over, there's going to be plenty of space. So give it a little trim. You're going to push it up and over. So as close to in the ditch as you can. And then that will be the main bulk of this project completed. We'll then just move on to the handles. Okay, so all we need to do is make the handles. So once you've cut your pieces, you're going to fold the piece in half, in half again into those into the central fold and then fold it all over and then you're just going to sew four rows of stitches um, to create the handle so um, maybe half a centimetre or a few, few millimetres from either edge and then just space out the additional two lines so about a centimetre apart um, and then you've got your handles so once you have finished your handles, you're going to measure in from each side seam, eight centimetres, and then fold under the edge of a strap by two centimetres and just place it just sitting above that pocket there. Pop a pin and then making sure your handle's not twisted. Do the same, eight centimetres from that seam into there, fold under, and you're going to sew these in place with a box and then across either running through each box and that will give it some strength. So do that with both sides and then we will look at our completed bags. There we go, there's your completed carry bag for your sewing. Um, bits and bobs so if you're going out and about you want to go to someone's house or you just want to keep everything in one place there you have it you see you've got your lovely bound edges some nice big pockets side pockets and lots of space for your fabric please do share your makes with me bye